Isaiah chapter 16 Send lambs as tribute to the ruler of the land, from Selah across the desert to the mount of daughter Zion. Like fluttering birds pushed from the nest, so are the women of Moab at the fords of the Arnon. Make up your mind, Moab says. Render a decision. Make your shadow like night at high noon. Hide the fugitives. Do not betray the refugees. Let the Moabite fugitives stay with you. Be their shelter from the destroyer. The oppressor will come to an end, and destruction will cease. The aggressor will vanish from the land. In love, a throne will be established. In faithfulness, a man will sit on it. One from the house of David, one who in judging seeks justice and speeds the cause of righteousness. We have heard of Moab's pride. How great is her arrogance, of her conceit, her pride and her insolence. But her boasts are empty. Therefore the Moabites wail, they wail together for Moab. Lament and grieve for the raisin cakes of Ker haresheth the fields of Hezbon wither, the vines of Sibma also. The rulers of the nations have trampled down the choicest vines, which once reached Jazer and spread towards the desert. Their shoots spread out and went as far as the sea. So I weep as Jazer weeps for the vines of Sibma, Hezbon, and Eliela. I drench you with tears. The shouts of joy over your ripened fruit and over your harvests have been stilled. Joy and gladness are taken away from the orchards. No one sings or shouts in the vineyards. No one treads out wine at the presses, for I have put an end to the shouting. My heart laments for Moab like a harp, my innermost being for Ker Hareseth. When Moab appears at her high place, she only wears herself out. When she goes to her shrine to pray, it is to no avail. This is the word the Lord has already spoken concerning Moab. But now the Lord says, Within three years, as a servant bound by contract would count them, Moab's splendor and all her many people will be despised, and her survivors will be very few and feeble. Isaiah chapter 17 A prophecy against Damascus See, Damascus will no longer be a city, but will become a heap of ruins. The cities of Aroa will be deserted and left to flocks which will lie down with no one to make them afraid. The fortified city will disappear from Ephraim and royal power from Damascus. The remnant of Aram will be like the glory of the Israelites, declares the Lord Almighty. In that day the glory of Jacob will fade, the fat of his body will waste away. It will be as when reapers harvest the standing corn, gathering the corn in their arms, as when someone gleans ears of corn in the valley of Rephaim. Yet some gleanings will remain as when an olive tree is beaten, leaving two or three olives on the topmost branches, four or five on the fruitful boughs, declares the Lord, the God of Israel. In that day, people will look to their Maker and turn their eyes to the Holy One of Israel. They will not look to the altars, the work of their hands, and they will have no regard for the Asherah poles and the incense altars their fingers have made. In that day, their strong cities, which they left because of the Israelites, will be like places abandoned to thickets and undergrowth, and all will be desolation. You have forgotten God your Saviour. You have not remembered the rock your fortress. Therefore, though you set out the finest plants and plant imported vines, though on the day you set them out you make them grow, and on the morning when you plant them you bring them to bud, Yet the harvest will be as nothing in the day of disease and incurable pain. Woe to the many nations that rage. They rage like the raging sea. 
Woe to the peoples who roar! They roar like the roaring of great waters. Although the peoples roar like the roar of surging waters, when he rebukes them they flee far away, driven before the wind like chaff on the hills, like tumbleweed before a gale. In the evening, sudden terror. Before the morning, they are gone. This is the portion of those who loot us, the lot of those who plunder us. Isaiah chapter 18 A Prophecy Against Cush Woe to the land of whirring wings along the rivers of Cush, which sends envoys by sea in papyrus boats over the water. Go, swift messengers, to a people tall and smooth-skinned, to a people feared far and wide, an aggressive nation of strange speech, whose land is divided by rivers. All you people of the world, you who live on the earth, when a banner is raised on the mountains, you will see it, and when a trumpet sounds, you will hear it. This is what the Lord says to me. I will remain quiet and will look on from my dwelling place, like shimmering heat in the sunshine, like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. For before the harvest, when the blossom is gone, and the flower becomes a ripening grape, he will cut off the shoots with pruning knives and cut down and take away the spreading branches. They will all be left to the mountain birds of prey and to the wild animals. The birds will feed on them all summer, the wild animals all winter. At that time, gifts will be brought to the Lord Almighty from a people tall and smooth-skinned, from a people feared far and wide, an aggressive nation of strange speech, whose land is divided by rivers. The gifts will be brought to Mount Zion, the place of the name of the Lord Almighty. One Timothy chapter five. Do not rebuke an older man harshly, but exhort him as if he were your father. Treat younger men as brothers older women as mothers, and younger women as sisters, with absolute purity. Give proper recognition to those widows who are really in need. But if a widow has children or grandchildren, these should learn, first of all, to put their religion into practice by caring for their own family and so repaying their parents and grandparents, for this is pleasing to God. The widow who is really in need and left all alone puts her hope in God, and continues night and day to pray and to ask God for help. But the widow who lives for pleasure is dead even while she lives. Give the people these instructions so that no one may be open to blame. Anyone who does not provide for their relatives, and especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. No widow may be put on the list of widows unless she is over sixty, has been faithful to her husband, and is well known for her good deeds, such as bringing up children, showing hospitality, washing the feet of the Lord's people, helping those in trouble, and devoting herself to all kinds of good deeds. As for younger widows, do not put them on such a list. For when their sensual desires overcome their dedication to Christ, they want to marry. Thus they bring judgment on themselves because they have broken their first pledge. Besides, they get into the habit of being idle and going about from house to house. And not only do they become idlers, but also busybodies who talk nonsense, saying things they ought not to. So I counsel younger widows to marry, to have children, to manage their homes, and to give the enemy no opportunity for slander. Some have, in fact, already turned away to follow Satan. If any woman who is a believer has widows in her care, she should continue to help them and not let the church be burdened with them, so that the church can help those widows who are really in need. The elders, who direct the affairs of the church well, are worthy of double honor, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. For Scripture says, Do not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain and the worker 
deserves his wages. Do not entertain an accusation against an elder unless it is brought by two or three witnesses. For those elders who are sinning, you are to reprove before everyone, so that the others may take warning. I charge you in the sight of God and Christ Jesus and the elect angels to keep these instructions without partiality and to do nothing out of favoritism. Do not be hasty in the laying on of hands and do not share in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. Stop drinking only water and use a little wine because of your stomach and your frequent illnesses. The sins of some are obvious, reaching the place of judgment ahead of them. The sins of others trail behind them. In the same way, good deeds are obvious, and even those that are not obvious cannot remain hidden forever. Psalm 65 Praise awaits you, our God in Zion. To you our vows will be fulfilled. You who answer prayer, to you all people will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. You answer us with awesome and righteous deeds, God our Saviour, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, who stilled the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves and the turmoil of the nations. The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders, where morning dawns, where evening fades. You call forth songs of joy. You care for the land and water it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain, for so you have ordained it. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your bounty and your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness overflow, the hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks, and the valleys are mantled with corn. They shout for joy and sing. Proverbs chapter 14 The wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands the foolish one tears hers down. Whoever fears the Lord walks uprightly, but those who despise him are devious in their ways. A fool's mouth lashes out with pride, but the lips of the wise protect them. Where there are no oxen, the manger is empty, but from the strength of an ox come abundant harvests. An honest witness does not deceive, but a false witness pours out lies. The mocker seeks wisdom and finds none, but knowledge comes easily to the discerning. Stay away from a fool, for you will not find knowledge on their lips. The wisdom of the prudent is to give thought to their ways, but the folly of fools is deception. Fools mock at making amends for sin, but goodwill is found among the upright. Each heart knows its own bitterness and no one else can share its joy. The house of the wicked will be destroyed, but the tent of the upright will flourish. There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. Even in laughter the heart may ache, and rejoicing may end in grief. The faithless will be fully repaid for their ways, and the good rewarded for theirs. The simple believe anything, but the prudent give thought to their steps. The wise fear the Lord and shun evil, but a fool is hot-headed and yet feels secure. A quick-tempered person does foolish things, 
and the one who devises evil schemes is hated. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. Evildoers will bow down in the presence of the good, and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. The poor are shunned even by their neighbours, but the rich have many friends. It is a sin to despise one's neighbour, but blessed is the one who is kind to the needy. Do not those who plot evil go astray? But those who plan what is good find love and faithfulness. All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. The wealth of the wise is their crown, but the folly of fools yields folly. A truthful witness saves lives, but a false witness is deceitful. Whoever fears the Lord has a secure fortress, and for their children it will be a refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. A large population is a king's glory, but without subjects a prince is ruined. Whoever is patient has great understanding, but one who is quick-tempered displays folly. A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. Whoever oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker, but whoever is kind to the needy honours God. When calamity comes, the wicked are brought down, but even in death the righteous seek refuge in God. Wisdom reposes in the heart of the discerning, and even among fools she lets herself be known. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin condemns any people. A king delights in a wise servant, but a shameful servant arouses his fury.